Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, so how does Gene Kim get all this knowledge from? Now, I'm not the greatest Bible teacher in the world, but some of you have given me some wonderful encouraging comments about where did I get my knowledge or, man, there's so much wealth and wisdom in you and etc., etc. So some of you are probably curious to pick on my brain. So what I can do is this, is that I can tell you about certain developmental stages on how you can grow a lot in knowledge and where I'm coming from, how I grew in knowledge. Now, the first thing is this, is that I would recommend going to our YouTube channel, Real Bible Believers, and then go to Playlists. Once you're on Playlists, then go to uh, Created Playlists. Once you're on Created Playlists, there are a few playlists that would be very key that might be helpful for you. The first one is Discipleship. So notice there's a Discipleship for Beginners. Then there's the discipleship for the intermediate level. Now, why am I recommending this discipleship part? So the discipleship series is intended in a way where I'm teaching you on how I grew in knowledge. See, I wouldn't show you how to grow in knowledge if I did not experience that myself. What's very important that onlineers do not understand is that you can't just grow in knowledge just like that by watching stuff online. You have to go through something that you experience. A lot of people say, I want to become a pastor. and I want to be like Dr. Gene Kim. Well, you got to realize this. It took me practically more than uh, 20 years to get to where I'm at. See, so it's not something where you can do this in just a couple of years. So I'm basically teaching stuff at discipleship and giving things on what I personally experienced. Otherwise, I would not be able to teach you all. So that's why I strongly recommend our discipleship lessons because it's teaching you where my mind is at on how I grew and developed in knowledge. So watch these discipleship videos. Basically, these discipleship videos are going to give you, number one, textbooks on what to buy, Two, the great resources on where to get your information and knowledge from. And three, which is one of the most important things, foundational doctrines, theological studies that can help you grow. These are basic doctrines. A lot of people get drawn to my conspiracy stuff, end time stuff, prophecy stuff, some really deep doctrines. But if you start off from there, to be very honest, you're going to be malfunctioned and imbalanced as a Christian. One of the greatest examples is this, is that you might know some interesting stuff about UFOs, but how many of you know the nine fruits of the Spirit? Now, if you know UFO as an alien and you don't know nine fruits of the Spirit, don't you think that's a real serious malfunction in your Christian growth? Now, it's amazing how many people will uh, know about end times prophecies on Revelation. And then when I were to ask you, okay, then can you quote me Romans chapter 6 verse 23? A lot of you don't even know that verse, which should be a basic thing. So that's why I would recommend starting on the discipleship classes. It will teach you on foundational basic doctrines over here. So you'll notice over here that uh, class number one, it's an introduction. Class number two, about the basis for our salvation. Now in these first classes, it also introduces soul winning. Now what I strongly recommend more than ever before is to learn how to do soul winning. That's the second thing. So not only watch our discipleship videos, but the second thing is to do soul winning. If you were to do soul winning, that will transform your knowledge a thousand percent. You might say, why? Because just watching online and learning things in your head is not enough. You need to actually talk to people. You might say, what's different about that? Well, I'll certainly tell you what's different. When you talk to each and every person, each and every person is different, bringing each and every different, unique circumstance, 
situation that you did not expect and you are not prepared for. Not only that, talking to people will show you how to transmit and to say out the knowledge that's in your head. A lot of you just know the stuff in your head, but do you know how to transmit it out of your mouth? You might say, well, I know how to do that. Well, once you start talking to people, then you'll know that you actually can't transmit that knowledge successfully, persuasively, and here's something that you don't know, easily for the person to understand you. I bet you some of the people just thought that you're out there when you talk to them all this Bible-believing truth stuff. So you need to learn how to communicate with people. That's why I strongly recommend soul winning. So here are some of the soul winning classes that you can go through. I mean, it gives you also chances to practice it. Uh, now, each discipleship has a homework I would strongly recommend. Please go through the homework assignments. If you do not go through the homework assignments at the end of the, this, of the discipleship videos, you're not going to grow. Now, look at some of the basic doctrines that you're going through. You're learning about... Uh, demon possession. You're learning about the resurrection of Christ, the canon of the Bible. Uh, over here, you got the humanity of Christ. Uh, you also got prayer. You got uh, also over here the nature of angels. You got rapture, street preaching. Uh, you also have a lot of other things over here. You got the fruits of the Spirit over here. You got the crucifixion of Christ. You got the millennium. So basically, all this wealth of doctrine is basic theological foundations that you should know. They are basically going to follow, show the following theological concepts. They're going to show bibliology, study of the Bible, theology, study of God, Christology, study of Christ, pneumatology, study of the Holy Spirit. It's also going to show ecclesiology, study of the church, eschatology, study of the end times, Angelology, study of angels. Demonology, study of devils. It's also going to show uh, our mark theology, which is the study of sin. Anthropology, the study of man. And so much more. So much more. So it's a wealth of doctrine that I would strongly recommend people to get into. So the discipleship. Uh, the next one, which I'm going to show you real quick, the intermediate discipleship, just real briefly. You'll, the intermediate discipleship, it's going to be covering apologetics. So apologetics is basically on uh, different religions and false beliefs, including atheism evolution. Now, you especially need to go through the homework assignment for this one because homework assignment will cover half of the apologetics course. So skipping homework assignment will be a major detrimental negative effect on apologetics for you to study. It will also give you the basic concepts, which is the King James Bible issue and dispensationalism. Now, some of you have been asking questions about that or not really familiar with it from our channel, but that is foundational about our channel that makes it very unique from a lot of other channels. We're King James only and we're dispensational which is why I'm able to teach all this deep doctrinal stuff. So these four videos will be very helpful in that one, especially the homework assignments. And then the remaining discipleships will be sh covering the apologetics. Now, what I've been currently going through in discipleship is world history. So I think you'll find that extremely fascinating. Now, the goal of this world history class is to combine the different PBI classes I've that I've attended, for some of you who don't know, it would cover archaeology, it would cover manuscript, some of manuscript evidence, it would cover church history, it would cover Old Testament survey, it would cover New Testament survey, it would even cover dispensationalism. So this is why I strongly recommend people to pay attention and to follow the discipleship courses. So please do that, and especially the homework assignment, the homework assignment is foundational where you know basic Bible stories. Now what's amazing is that uh, I would sometimes get emails from people like, you don't know the deep concept of Revelation. This is what I discovered. And they throw their own theory on Revelation. And then I would probably ask them, so do you know who the third king of Israel was? And they might go, huh? 
I mean, do you guys know who the third king of Israel was? Some of you may not know. If you do know, who's the fourth king of Israel? That's a basic Sunday school teaching that you should be knowing that kind of stuff. So the homework assignments over here is going to tell you to listen to Dr. Rutman's ad-lib commentary. And in Dr. Rutman's ad-lib commentary, you will know all the basic stories of the Bible that you need to know. Because I'll tell you what, if you don't know that, there are kids in Sunday school classes in non-denominational her heretical churches who will know those basic Bible stories while you, who profess to be Bible believers, don't. So that's a cry in shame. So you need to do that, okay? All right, so now that you understand that, so I would highly recommend the discipleship courses. If you study this, you're going to catch up to a lot to where I'm at. Now, I mentioned some stuff concerning about the King James Bible issue and dispensationalism. So those are the other two things that I'd strongly recommend for you to watch. So in our playlist over here, you'll see Defending the KJV. Defending the KJV will cover deep manuscript evidence issues, and it will also be covering basic King James Bible issues. So this one is somewhere between amateur to professional scholastic range and even apologetics, where it can get to professional debates. So this is... If you were to watch these and to study these, it will increase your knowledge of the Bible incredibly, especially in the King James Bible issue. This is actually uh, a lot of uh, half of this is probably advanced disciple discipleship. So I'm actually going to teach about half of these stuff on the video on advanced discipleship. So this is some pretty good stuff. Open up the your other Bibles, one, please, to Second Timothy sorry about chapter that. three, and we're going. So that one was kind of loud over there. I think I should move this. Okay. Anyways, the next one is dispensationalism. So I would highly recommend to study that one. If you were to study dispensationalism and the King James Bible issue, then you're actually going to, it's going to be basically eye-opening. It's going to open the keys and the doors to a lot of things on deeper studies of the Bible. So dispensationalism is one of the top, <clears throat> one of the playlists that has the most videos in our channel. It's one of them. So a lot of dispensational teaching. Now, I would highly recommend even for people who are first timers to watch our dispensationalism playlist. It's going to be literally unlocking so many doors in your study of the Bible. Some of you are saying... You know, uh, Pastor Kim, I want to know so much of the Bible as you, but I don't even understand the words I'm reading. Well, watch Dispensationalism, and it will change your Bible study completely. It's going to be like a total 180, and you're going to go, whoa, I get it. So please do that. Now, for some of you who doubt me, the evidence is the people in my church, number one. Number two, it's the onliners themselves who will testify, and maybe they can testify and put a comment on that in this video. But the third thing is even me. <laughs> so I would certainly know that myself because it changed my life, opened up my knowledge of the scriptures. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, I don't know much of the Bible and understand what I'm reading, so I need help with that. Well, what I would highly recommend is to watch our commentary videos. Now, a long, long time ago, I mean, I've been pastoring for 10 years I've been teaching commentary. So here's our commentary on Romans. It's one of the best places to start, all right? A lot of people would like to jump on Revelation. No, actually, you want to start with Pauline epistles. You want to start out with doctrines that apply to Christians, not in times when we're not going to even be here. You need doctrines on the present time, which is now, not future end times. So if you look, if you don't even know the doctrines about yourself in this current age, I mean, don't profess that you know so much about future end times. So that's why it's very important that you need to know the doctrines now. Now, look, I'm telling all of you onlineers this because you want to pick on my brain, right? You want to know how I study. And some of you actually even want to, man, I want to uh, know the secrets to study how like Dr. Kim does. Well, I'm not that great, but I'm actually giving you uh, my secret here, it is studying these Pauline epistles first. It's starting with basic discipleship. 
So uh, listen to this one. You might say, why are these basic commentaries important that you're pointing out with these two? The reason why is this. It's literally going verse by verse, word for word, explaining every single word and verse on what it means. What's going to happen is this. By going through this study method, it's going to give you a common sense gist of how the Bible reading is like what the language of the King James Bible is like, then what's going to happen later on is you're going to get used to it. And then eventually when you do your own Bible reading, it's just going to click automatically normally like a flow. The thing is this, a lot of people say the King James Bible is too hard to understand. Well, to be very honest, it's not. It's very easy. You might say, well, why is it hard for me to understand to begin with? It's because you're a baby Christian. To understand the word of God, you need to grow in it, not remain a baby. So see, because you're a baby Christian, you need someone to nurse you and to feed you, uh, which is why the Bible provided pastors and teachers. So take advantage of it by having some pastor help you to feed you that milk. And then what's going to happen is you're going to eventually grab the milk bottle yourself. Then eventually you're going to chew on uh, more substance of the food, and then you're going to hit the deep meat after that. So listen to these commentaries. Uh, I also have a commentary on Corinthians, which I just pointed out earlier, and not just Romans. I also have a commentary on Galatians, which is what I would highly recommend by looking through this playlist. I also have a commentary, which is now the most recent, on Revelation. But Put Revelation last. Listen to the Pauline epistles first. That will incredibly help you. Uh, the next thing that I'd recommend then is to go to um, this website, kjv1611.org. So I'm giving you a lot of good resources for my secrets here. All right, when you're here, I would type down over here, Ruckman Reference Bible. Now, the Rockman Reference Bible is where I get, like, a huge percentage of my teachings from. So you might say, man, how does he get this kind of stuff? Well, you got to realize this is that Dr. Gene Kim, he doesn't get all this knowledge himself. It's because of Bible-believing preachers and teachers that he's indebted to that he's been growing under them. So I would highly recommend the Ruckman Reference Bible. Once you type that down, you got options here. You got the Economy Ruckman Reference Bible, which is only $25. You got the hardcover, and then you got the really nice one over here, which is about $119. Now look at this one. This is a hand-sized one, Ruckman Reference Bible. It's so cool, $20, hand-sized, with 118 appendices in the back. In that hand size economy Ruckman reference Bible with footnotes at the bottom, boy, I would be getting that. Now, if you want to uh, get a one that's going to be permanent and part of your life and you want a really nice one, get this one. And then over here, you got the black cow hide and the black calf skin. And man, you can get a nice one over here, okay? They even have a wide margin. So you can uh, ask them for a wide margin Ruckman reference Bible. You might say, what's a wide margin? A wide margin is, okay, so you see in this picture those certain white spaces in between the columns and on the sides of the columns. So um, wide margin will make those white portions even wider so that you can write notes next to the verses. So that one, I'm giving you keys and secrets here on how you can grow in knowledge and to get into really advanced learning. So do that. You Trust me, it will help you grow so much. A lot of students at my school did that. That way they can grow much more in knowledge. All right, so get this one. It's really neat. So here it is, the Wide Margin Ruckman Reference Bible. It's definitely worth your money. And then when you're doing your Bible reading, you can study and read the notes. Now, if you're a beginner, I would not suggest that because a lot of beginners, when they read the Bible, they don't understand the verse, and then they're reading Dr. Ruckman's notes. Um, you need to understand the verse first. So that's why I'd recommend watching our commentary series. Now, you might say, why should I do that? Well, the reason why is this, is that once you get the common sense gist of it, of the reading, then you can start checking if my commentary 
on the video that I'm teaching is accurate in the interpretation. Not only that, if the Ruckman reference notes are accurate too. So that's why it's best that you need to get this common sense gist of the reading. That way you can always check up with your teachers too and see if what they're teaching you is the truth by reading exactly as the word says. Now, I'd also recommend this is that take advantage of this website. When you take advantage of this website, there are so many books that you can buy over here. You got commentaries, hymn stories, etc. I mean, this is the number one site, absolute number one site to buy all kinds of books where you can develop so much knowledge. Every single book, nearly every single book that I buy is from this bookstore. So that's where a lot of my knowledge comes from. The Bible Baptist Bookstore culminates uh, ministries and writings from all sorts of scholars, Bible-believing preachers, and obviously Dr. Upman himself, and even historical uh, people, Bible, uh, historical scholars and preachers during the old days. So take advantage of this website and then find some books where you can study and grow. And that's what I would highly recommend if you're going to grow in knowledge. Take advantage of this. Another thing is our resources link. Now, a lot of people, they don't really go to our website. Now, some of you don't uh, don't really pay attention, which I which is what I would suggest that you got to pay attention in our videos. Did you ever notice near the end of our small video clips, it would recommend going to this website? or it would mention to click on the resources link below. Now look, nearly every one of our YouTube videos is going to have a resources link below. Click on that resources link, which is right below our video in the video description section on YouTube, and then it will take you to this page of resources. So notice the resources tab here. It's gonna look like this. We didn't make this resources tab unless we want you to grow. Look, I don't want to keep all this. Uh, look, Dr. Gene Kim is not trying to hoard all this knowledge. I want to share it with all of you guys. I want you to grow like I do. I want, uh, I want people out there to be even better than me. So notice right here that this website, go to the resources link, follow the instructions on everything here. And then after that, then uh, notice all the links here. It gives you everything you need to know. So the first thing, which is what I strongly recommend, if some of you want to really grow in knowledge, is to find a Bible-believing church near you. Click on that. It'll give you states in alphabetical orders. Now, if some of you are in foreign countries, um, I would suggest this. Go to kjvchurches.com, and you can have better chances of that. Or you can personally email us. Email us as... You can email us at sjbbc at bbcinternational.org. Now, the reason why I recommend going to a church, now, this is something about onliners. All you guys are doing is just watching all kinds of videos online. Now, look, how can you grow in a stable manner, in a consistent manner, if you're watching so many different teachers and videos who contradict each other, who are not of the same crowd, and who are teaching you differently. See, you can't grow fast when you have an unstable growth that hinders and contradicts in the middle. You need a stable, consistent, smooth growth, and that can only be done with people of a like-minded, Bible-believing teachers of a like-minded concept. And not only that, a Bible-believing teacher who had years of experience in a ministry rather than some typical Joe who claimed, oh yeah, I uh, I attended a church and not, he's not even a, had any years of experience as a pastor, let alone a Bible-believing pastor, let alone having other Bible-believing pastors approve of him. If he has zero approval of Bible-believing, pa experienced pastors, that shows that guy is full of himself and doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, me, myself, I've got so many Bible-believing pastors who approve of me and who I fellowship with. Why? Uh, because it's evident right here that I'm not some uh, nobody who comes out of nowhere and thinks that I'm all that. 
So uh, attend a Bible-believing church. Why? Because you cannot grow unless you don't have a trainer. Unless you don't, um, you cannot grow unless you have people around you. So unless you have a trainer, unless you have people around you, brothers and sisters in Christ, you'll know how people function. If you know how people function, you'll know how to teach other people, be a good example to other people, what not to say where you ruin your testimony or look like a moron. A lot of onliners who shamefully profess themselves to be Bible believers already made a fool out of themselves because they don't know how to function like that. So you need to attend a Bible-believing church. That way you can learn how to filter out an online concept with a real-life situation concept. You're all at a virtual online platform, which shows that you can't function with real-life society. Now, I'm not saying that to bash uh, some of you who are very sincere. A lot of you are sincere, support our ministry, and you don't have a Bible-believing church or even an any independent Baptist church near you. So I totally understand that. So I'm not here to bash you, but I am here to kind of warn you because there are some onliners who end up really kooky and rebellious, and you don't want to end up like that. I really care for you guys. I mean, I want you guys to grow a lot in knowledge and even be better than me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be saying all that. Okay, so here's where you can find Bible-believing churches and materials in different foreign languages, but it's not a lot for now uh, because we're still in process of making a brand new website. Ooh, so we, I didn't really relay that news yet, but we're making a brand new website, so it's still on the go. Study dispensationalism here, King James Bible issue here. Here's how you can get the Ruckman Reference Bible. Here's how you can learn how to do soul winning. This is street preaching resources that even have law codes on what can help you while you're doing street preaching to defend yourself. Here's a study on apologetics, religion, heresies. Here you can order different tracts. Here you can order different Bible-believing materials. Here you can listen to videos and audios of different Bible-believing preachers, not just me. Over here you can listen to different Bible-believing radios. And over here you can study under different Bible-believing institutes. But you have to follow their terms, and these Bible-believing institutes won't accept you unless you've been under years under a Bible-believing pastor, see, and church, and they approve of you. Because these institutes don't just accept people out of thin air that they don't know. So you got to understand that. Because there's a lot of crazy people out there. Even in online, you don't know who's watching, and what kind of unstable mindset they have. So you have to understand these people, okay? Okay, so anyway, so this is our resources section. So if you start out with all this, this will help you with the foundational mindset to grow properly. And then when you get into more advanced stuff, that's when you can study the Ruckman Reference Bible, which is, again, what I recommend it. When you study that, it's going to increase your knowledge then buy the books from the Bible Baptist Bookstore website that I showed you. That's going to increase your knowledge so much. All right, now let me show you some other secrets that I actually didn't tell anybody. So you guys are the first now. So here are some secrets. Some of them I may have hinted or indicated, but uh, over here, this is where I'm plainly going to say it. So that's all the foundational stuff on what helped me grow. If you don't do this foundational stuff, the following secrets are not going to help you, okay? All right, I hope that you understand that. A lot of people want to take shortcuts to grow. If you do shortcuts to grow, I guarantee you this. Yeah, you might be knowledgeable, but only in certain areas you're knowledgeable. Not in full life experience. Full life experience is far more important. That way certain knowledgeable topics can become even more powerful. And not only that, you'll have full knowledge of all kinds of topics, not just certain knowledge on some specific topics. Some people think that they're Bible scholars just because they can, oh, I can teach Revelation better than Gene Kim does. That don't make you a Bible scholar. Imagine, you know, all the book of Revelation and you don't even, uh, you can't even know what the first 10 books of your Bible are. Can you tell me the first 10 books of your Bible from memory? I mean, that would be shameful, wouldn't it? Sometimes you just don't know how people are like. Okay, 
So now what is helpful for me is actually debates. So once I have all this Bible believing knowledge, what extremely helped me was where I was getting into debates actually. So if I watch debates over here, I get a chance to watch d different people argue, okay? So when I watch different people argue, so let's just type one example, Christian debates, okay? When I watch Christian debates, it gives me an idea of how to argue successfully. Now, here's the thing is that when people watch debates, they just watch and listen and see which argument is the most successful. If you do that, that's not going to help you. Debates, when you watch these, pay attention to the tactics debaters use to bring a successful argument. Okay? Look at their method. Look at their manners. See that? Look at their manners, their facial expressions. Look on um, if a person brings a really tough argument. Look how the opponent fires back by being calm or resorting to changing the subject or uh, stuff like that. Now, some of them is cheap tactics and tricks, which I don't like. It shows dishonesty. But I'll be honest, it's very effective. So even dishonest tactics have effective means. That's why politicians, why do they have to be dishonest? To win gullible people's heart. People can't tell. People really can't tell. So uh, pay attention to debates. See what kind of tactics they, they use. And that way, you don't have to be dishonest like them when you talk to people, but you can learn some things from them that you know how to work more effectively with people in debates. Watch debates, see their methods, their tactics, their arguments, obviously, you want to listen to their arguments. And what happens is this, then what's going to happen is, what I tend to do is that after that, I look at the names of the certain people who debate, and then I'll watch more of their arguments and their debates. So you can do that over here. Now, uh, 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 one of my favorite debaters is William Lane Craig because he teaches from a very deep concept. He's also known as the atheist nightmare. But one of the problems with him is that he's very doctrinally shallow. I mean, he's so bad in doctrine. It's, it's just plainly embarrassing, even though he's philosophically deep. Now, why was I able to not get deceived by uh, and carried away by William Lane Craig, yet be able to learn from him and grow so much. You know why? Because I learned foundational things first, which is why I stress so much to you people. Get the foundational first. That way, when you do this kind of stuff, it, this will help you a thousand percent. Now, I went to UC Berkeley, and then I attended different grad schools and etc., and you know what? A lot of the what they taught was stupid, heretical stuff. But because I learned some professional skills, professional tactics, and deep concepts over there, that it helped me immensely, incredibly in my knowledge. But why? how was I able to control and filter it? I had the foundation as a Bible believer. You need that too. Okay, so here's one of my tactics that I would uh, highly recommend that you can uh, uh, do. Also, uh, Christian Prince, he's just very uh, hilarious concerning about Islam, so uh, I would recommend watching his debates. Now, to be quite honest, I think the way that he debates is not truly honest, but here's the thing. It's very clever. That's why I keep recommending watching debates, because it gives you an idea how to argue successfully persuasively convince people. Uh, it also motivates you. Debates motivates you where you're like, the person brought up a good point where it stumped me. I better, I'm going to go and find the answer. And it motivates you to study more. So uh, that's why I recommend doing uh, debates. Christian Prince is very hilarious too. So um, he's very good concerning Islam. And then William Lane Craig for Atheism. And then obviously Kent Hovind for evolution. But with Kent Hovind, because he's post-trib, you also have to watch out for that too. 
Um, I like Jason Lyle a lot. Jason Lyle is like really good concerning about evolution. He's a PhD on, I believe, astrophysics. So I would recommend watching his stuff debunking evolution. But obviously, I don't think he's a King James Bible believer. So you have to watch out for that too. Uh, Hugh Ross, he's actually, sadly, a theistic uh, evolutionist. But the reason why he's very effective to me in his debates is because not only is he a good debater, but he's able to use science where it hits the atheist. So that's why I resort to him on that one, where it hits the core of atheist scientists that other creationists cannot reach. And then the other evolution false concepts that Hugh Ross believes in, I just debunked that with uh, what I learned from the creationists over there. So debates are very effective. Okay, so that'll help you with growing in advanced knowledge and also the studying the Ruckman Reference Bible, uh, reading other Bible-believing books. Another thing is this. Now, this might be very dull for you, but what I would <laughs> recommend is listening to uh, lectures, literally grad school lectures. Now, you might say, oh, you got to be kidding me. No, I'm really serious. If you were to listen to these lectures on philosophy... Um, what's going to happen is this, is that you're going to be able to understand the terminologies that they use. Uh, you're also going to, uh, understand, uh, you're also going to understand a professional scholastic mindset because you got to realize this scholars, I know that they're stupid, but the reason why they're stupid is concerning the Bible. But when it comes to the subject that they're teaching, besides where, it's anti-biblical, the other stuff that they're teaching in their concept, they spent all their life teaching and studying it. Otherwise, they wouldn't get a PhD and a professor and waste their whole years on that. It's because they spent their whole life on that subject. So that's why take advantage of listening to these uh, lectures where you can understand what they're talking about, the way their critical thinking and their mind works, and then this will increase your knowledge a lot, actually. So I would recommend listening to different professional school lectures, and this will help you a lot. Now, uh, what helped me a lot was actually reading. Now, I know you guys don't like to hear that, but trust me, you need to read, okay? You need to read. So here's one example, Christian Science Monitor. Now, obviously, they're not a uh, Christian organization. The Christian Science... Uh, Christian science is obviously part of the church, but uh, the cultish church movement. But anyway, this part, the Christian Science Monitor, if you read this kind of language, you have to keep up with daily news anyways, right? And a lot of you are into the coronavirus, so you're all wondering what's going on. So read not just uh, easy newspapers or conspiracy theory newspapers. You need to write like, you need to read like some deep, newspapers, the ones that use like professional language and some terminologies and concepts that's kind of a little deeper to grasp. So read this one. Uh, there's the Wall Street Journal. So st start, start out your morning. Start out your day by reading news because it's important that Christians need to know what's going on today, right? Uh, a lot of you are into end times prophecy, but how can you get be aware of the times we're in, the end times, if you don't even read news, right? So take advantage of reading lots and lots of news. Pay attention. Read. Uh, read these deep newspapers, scholastic newspapers. That way, your knowledge can increase tenfold. Uh, your language skills can improve. You need to read and read and read. If you don't read you're not going to increase a lot more in knowledge. Now imagine combining Bible reading with uh, professional reading. Do you know how much you're going to boom? That's why a lot of you think that I'm smart. The reason why is because I'm combining that together. All right, now for research, I'm going to give you uh, one of my secrets here. Click scholar.google.com. You might say, why is that? Scholar.google.com is not just uh, searching different subjects on Google and think that you can teach something professional. No, you can't do that because there's a lot of uh, people can post anything on Google. I mean, if you're a six-year-old, you can post something on the Internet, right? 
you can make a blog. So just because you find some article on Google doesn't mean that, oh, you know, I learned a, a lot of stuff. No, it can be written by an amateur. So go to Google, go, uh, scholar.google.com and then type stuff where you can uh, increase more in knowledge. So then actually in my PhD paper, I used a lot on Google Scholar. So then I would write history of Korea, for example. And then look at this. There's a lot of stuff over here. And it's in scholastic form. So take advantage of this website. And then uh, you can find some things that are free in PDF. And some, unfortunately, which is only portions of, of from a book at books.google.com. But at least a page or a couple pages is enough where you can use that as part of your research. So this is very effective. I would take advantage of this if I were you. It would be extremely helpful. Uh, one, one of the other things that I did was is that I would sign up for a library. So actually, um, I would highly recommend this is that if some of you have a library, you should sign up with them. Uh, if you have some kind of college affiliation, even better. So that might be the disadvantage for some of you onlineers. But at least you can go to a local library, right? But if you can have access to a school library, take full advantage of that because school libraries, see, they got databases here. And because they got databases, you can have access to all kinds of professional stuff online. So here's like one psychology concerning on human development. So I don't know if anything might pop out. Let's just see over here. So then notice that they'll have uh, two exam uh, so databases. So actually it's a database, not a topic or a subject. So that's where I kind of slipped up in. But anyway, so notice right here they got social services abstracts, which, which can relate to human development. And then you have to have your PIN ID, which the library will give to you, which is why you should contact the library. Anyway, take advantage of libraries because I'm still a uh, Berkeley alumni. I still uh, take access with it where I can... Uh, access their books, their journals that you can't find usually anywhere. Uh, they got a pretty cool, cool underground library. But anyway, <laughs> that's besides the main point. Now, here's the thing which might kind of be a little different for some of you, but this is actually going to be extremely helpful to you, is you need to read graduate research papers. Now, you might say, oh, I hate that. Well, Here's the thing, is that if you read graduate research papers, that will extremely grow your knowledge on how to actually study the, the research cases. So usually they'll give the research, they'll start off with an abstract, which will give you an overview idea. Then they'll give you the research, the actual research and the methods that were involved with it. And then being involved in graduate work, I'm just giving you a, a tease of this now. So I'm giving you a cheat sheet over here for those of you who don't attend grad school. So abstract, then you can study the actual research that they did, which will include the methods. And then what they're going to do is then they're going to give you certain breakdown of sections on how their theory will entail. And then they're going to show you a conclusion after that. Now, if you get familiar with the graduate research paper, if so start off reading it, and you're going to first go, what is this? Because I said the same thing, too. But I was forced to do, like, uh, so much reading per week where I was, like, reading tons and tons of articles per week. It gave me the common sense gist after about a year of reading. So I would highly recommend that if you start reading this one, what's going to happen is this. Then you can research faster. Okay, some of you wonder, how do I get the stuff online and how do I come up with this uh, deep teachings and etc. Well, graduate research paper helped me. I had to learn how to speed read, actually. So how you can learn eventually how to speed read is you need to first understand how a graduate research paper is like. So I gave you an outline uh, breakdown concept of it. So if you were to get into that, and then what's going to happen is you'll be able to know how future graduate research papers that you read, what's the basic outline like, and then you can be able to speed read. Uh, I don't read everything in a graduate research paper, actually. 
I, I just read certain portions of it and I'm able to do a, like a full three hour discussions and graduate classes actually. So that's done by constantly getting used to graduate research papers. Law school helped me a lot with speed reading too, but that's a different story. I'm just basically giving you a lot of my secrets over here, okay? So anyways, let me recommend a few books. So these are reference books that can help you advance in your knowledge as well. So one of them is Strong's Concordance. Now that one's like, ev like everyone uses that. Now some amateurs, they use Strong's Concordance to pretend they know so much Greek and Hebrew. And because they do that, some people think, oh, this pastor must be a great scholar. No, he's actually just using Strong's Concordance. Use Strong's Concordance because it can show you all the words that you're looking for in your King James Bible. And then it can show you the Greek words that can follow along with it as well as Hebrew words. So it will make you a professional. Now remember, you need the foundational teachings first, which I recommended in my um, earlier in this video. Get the foundational teaching first. That way you don't get carried away with Greek and Hebrew guard. You need to be on guard. You need to be on guard concerning Greek and Hebrew. But here's a secret on that one is Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. It will be very helpful to you on that one. It helped me a lot. Uh, another thing uh, that I would recommend is BibleGateway.com. Now, I use different sites, but that's okay. I'm just going to give a site that's most popular, and that's Bible Gateway. So notice right here, you can type any word in your King James Bible, and this is what I use a lot for my Bible teaching. So like the coronavirus, right? Wow, how'd you get the verses like that? Well, just type down a word that you know in your Bible, like pestilence. And if you're to type that down, wow, then go through all these verses and you might find something. And then you might fool people that, ooh, this guy knows a lot of the Bible. Well, to be quite honest, no, it, the person just used a Bible gateway to word search. So this can actually help you a lot with your teaching is Bible gateway over here. So type down a word and you can find it. Not only that, this is really, really cool. You can compare with different modern versions. Now you might say, but I thought you're King James only. Yeah, I, I know that. But if you compare with different modern versions, you can actually learn to critique these modern Bibles. Not only that, see from their own understanding how they perceive the verse as, which can be actually very helpful for you to critique or to confirm in your Bible reading. It can be a good, uh, you can find good things from the different modern versions as well as bad things. Okay, so this is another thing that I would highly recommend. And then the news articles, if you were to read news every day, that can help a lot with, uh, if you're going to talk about current events or even end times or even politics. Uh, another thing is, now this one, I don't think a lot of people would like to buy, but uh, this is what I bought. Now, um, if you were to buy uh, the Handbook of Philosophy, there are many different versions of this, but I have the Cambridge edition of the Handbook of Philosophy, and it will show you every belief uh, which they consider as philosophical ideal, but basically every uh, plain language to you, so you can understand as a Bible believer, it will show you every single belief in the world out there, this handbook, and then it'll give you a summary of it. It's like a dictionary of it. So that's going to be extremely helpful to you. So that's what helped me a lot with my advanced uh, knowledge and growth as well. If you understand philosophy, it's going to be very useful, actually. Very useful. But that's why the Bible warns you to beware of philosophy. You might say, why is that? Because it's all human wisdom. It's not Bible wisdom. So the reason why I'm recommending Handbook of Philosophy is that if you know the human wisdom and you've grown so much in biblical wisdom, then you can learn how to critique human wisdom. Not only that, something of human wisdom can contribute to your biblical wisdom, which in return can critique the human wisdom. Now, you may not understand that, but once you start getting into it, then you'll know exactly what I mean later on. Uh, the other thing that I'd recommend is Webster's 1828 Dictionary. They have this online. 
if there's a certain word that you don't understand in your Bible, or actually even in debates when you're doing debates, this is very helpful because you can look up a, a word and then you can have several definitions over here. So this helped me a lot with my research in defending every word in the King James Bible against Greek and Hebrew criticisms. So that's why I'd highly recommend Ameri Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Just type down a word that you find in your King James Bible, and the definition itself can actually defend the reading of the King James Bible reading text. So that can be very helpful. Uh, one thing that I'd recommend, which is not really that, I don't think this will help you unless you study and learn Greek and Hebrew. Now, I study Greek and Hebrew, which is why it helped me a lot, but a lot of you don't know. So what you can do is this, is you can buy Jack Mormon's book. He has a book about uh, early, let's see, it goes Church Fathers and Manuscript. So there's a book on that, and he has a list of every manuscript uh, evidence with over uh, practically 200 verses in your King James Bible that can show the doctrinal problems with different modern versions. So if you were to have this, this can show you exact manuscript names and families. Now, it's important that you read the first pages of Mormon's book. Otherwise, you're not going to understand the table charts of the 200 verses that he gives. So I'm giving you, again, my secrets on manuscript evidence. That's why your pastor is able to go on par with some of these scholars. And some of these scholar wannabes, which people think, oh, he's a great professional debater, etc. That's why they don't have the guts to critique me after that again when I show them what's wrong with their teachings. Now, uh, this is what I studied. So some of you want to know my secret, right? So I have the 28th, not the 29th edition. Because I have this book with me, I'm able to look at the foot. Uh, I'm able to look at their manuscript evidence families at their footnotes, and because I'm able to look at their manuscript family in their footnotes, I'm able to show what's wrong with the modern version readings and defend the KJV readings. But because some, a lot of you don't know Greek and Hebrew and can't understand this one, uh, I'd recommend Jack Mormon's book. Okay, but I'm again, I'm just showing you my one of my secrets because some of you want to pick in my brain what's going on. Okay, so I've given you a lot of stuff. The last thing, last secret I can give to you is this, is etymology. If you're going to go to online etymology, it can defend certain words. Now, I've been getting a lot of people who are worried about the Mandela effect affecting the King James Bible. To be quite honest, uh, that's not really, I mean, uh, the Mandela effect is actually not really good arguments over there, okay? So, excuse me, so it's not wine skins, it's bottles, actually. Anyways, uh, as I continue going through a certain words over here, I'm just trying to find a certain word here, an online etymology dictionary. As I continue talking about the Mandela effect, the Mandela effect, one of their criticisms was concerning about, you know, certain verses in the KJV where, um, these words that they mention about corn, when it should be more of wheat, and etc., etc., the KJV readings uh, give an inaccurate interpretation. Well, actually, no. If you were to look up the KJV word and look up the online etymology and the history of that word, it would actually defend the King James Bible reading. A lot of this Mandela effect stuff where they're saying the KJV translators uh, wrote the wrong word. No, they just don't know plain history of the root word. So the online etymology dictionary will be very helpful for that one. Now, this might shock some of you, but I'm giving you something that can be very helpful. Wikipedia. Oh, Pastor Kim is actually an amateur. He's stupid. No, it's pretty simple here because there's so much. Uh, when I read graduate research papers, obviously you don't have time to go through all of that. So if you want something quick and easy, so let's say the history, I don't know if they have this, but let's try this out. If you're to type something like this on Wikipedia, yeah, there you go, Christianity in Korea. What's going to help you is that it's going to give you a quick summary. Now, obviously, when it gives you a quick summary, you can't say, oh, okay, I believe it, I'm a scholar. I don't do that when I teach online. Once I go through Wikipedia, it gives me an idea 
because it mentions certain names, concepts, ideas, words. Once I get that, all I have to do is go to scholar.google.com or read graduate research papers, and then I can have professional resources for this and understanding. See, so I'm giving you a lot of my secrets over here. All right, I think that's enough, right, to pick on my brain. <laughs> so I hope that this has been very helpful for you. And to get an idea, so how does Dr. Kim get his knowledge? I mean, this guy's got like about 500 degrees and he's got 3,000 videos and that he teaches a lot of interesting stuff from the Bible that I didn't hear about, blah, 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 blah. Well, you got to realize this. All of this came from, the reason why I'm saying blah, 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 blah is because I am not all that in all these descriptions. I am what I am today because of what the Lord put me through and put me through experiences. Because of that humble servant's heart willing to listen to the Bible-believing church and the Bible-believing pastor that he gave to me, and then being humble and going through so much hardship, yet being strong and hardworking through schools, difficult schools, and professional scholarly discussions and readings and etc., self-discipline of that, I be, and constantly pastoring and taking care of the church I am, what I am today. The last thing I want to say is this. What can help you increase so much knowledge is where you where you are able to gain the trust of the Bible-believing pastor and church. They're eventually going to give you a chance to teach and preach. So once they give you that chance to teach and preach, grab that opportunity and that will train you so much. Listen, I did 3,000 videos, so that's 3,000 teachings almost. You don't think that I'm going to increase in knowledge after that? Usually what helps increasing knowledge a lot more is when you start teaching, actually. It's not just listening and hearing all the stuff, writing down notes. It's actually teaching it. So that would actually help you 10 times more. But this can only be done when, again, you need to go to a Bible-believing church, Bible-believing pastor. If you're going to a church that's doctrinally wrong or... Uh, not Bible-believing strong like we are, and it's just an independent, fundamental, KJV-only church, just that level, then, yeah, you may not get that kind of growth. So I would recommend just be under our online ministry, our church. Study our discipleship videos. And be patient, please. Be patient. If you're to do that, you can grow in time. Lord bless you all. I hope that I've given you a lot of things to... Uh, Get an idea on what's inside the mind of Gene Kim. How did he get all this stuff?